Welcome. You're listening to Newcomers, a podcast for young writers and voice actors. The following short stories were written by novice writers and may contain explicit content. In response to the global social distancing movement, we introduce Long Distance, a new segment in which our readers record from home in order to continue sharing stories with our communities. Roach Coach, written by Olivia Nelson, read by Dixie Curry. I enter the room wearing my Speedo and my blue-tinted goggles. The steam from the pool makes the goggles fog up. I love these goggles. My mom bought them for me. I'm going to need them today because today is the day that I am going to jump in the deep end. Public pools are disgusting when you really think about it. You never know when a kid is going to pee his pants or something. At least it's better than the ocean. I don't like the ocean much. That's where fish poop. Sharks also live in the ocean. I would say that next to bears, sharks are my biggest fear. Lucky for me, there are no sharks or bears at the public pool, just smelly kids. As I walk up to the edge of the pool, my heart is racing. Luckily, the pool is mostly empty. The only other person here is an old lady wearing a pink diving cap with flowers on it. She reminds me of my grandmother, which is comforting. I wave at the old grandma lady, and she waves back. Come on, Richard, I say in my most quiet inside voice. Richard is my best friend. Richard scuttles up to the edge of the pool next to me. I can tell he's nervous. We look over the edge of the pool together. This is the deep end. There is no lifeguard on duty. If we were to jump in, who would save us? That little old grandma lady? I don't think so. Richard doesn't think so either. Last week, I brought Richard to show and tell in my class. It did not go well. When I pulled him out of my cubby, my teacher, Miss Anderson, threw her hands in the air and screamed. She said the classroom was no place for bugs. I kindly explained to her that Richard is not a bug, he's a blatodia. That's the fancy name for a cockroach. She didn't like that. I was immediately sent to the guidance counselor's office. The guidance counselor asked me if my mommy and daddy fight a lot. I told her they do not. They love each other very much. After a few more questions about my parents, she walked me back to my classroom and explained to my teacher that she couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I didn't know there was anything wrong with me. Richard assured me that there isn't anything wrong with me, which made me feel a whole lot better. I do not have very many friends in my class. That's why Richard is my best friend. He sticks by me no matter what. It's been that way for as long as I can remember. I look at Richard once again. You first, Richard, I whisper. I don't want the old grandma lady to hear me and take me to the guidance counselor, too. Richard's got wings, and I expect that will help him swim better. Richard looks at me. He's still scared. I give him a look to show him how brave I am, but that's not true at all. I'm not brave. I'm a scaredy cat. Richard takes a big breath of air into his lungs and jumps into the pool. I can't believe he did it. I feel so proud of my friend. I want to jump up and down and scream out for Richard. But I know if I do that the old grandma lady will call my mom and dad or maybe even the police. So I don't. But after a little bit, I realize I don't see Richard anymore. Where'd he go? Then I see him. This is the scariest thing that has ever happened. Richard is at the bottom of the pool. I look around for help. There still isn't anyone who can help. I can feel the hot tears coming from behind my eyes and a lump in my throat. Where is a lifeguard when you need one? Mom and Dad tell me when I get sad it's okay to cry. But I know the truth. People don't like it when you cry. They call you names like Baby and Dork. I don't like being called these names, and that's why I don't cry in front of other people, unless it's Richard. Now I'm begging the grandma lady to help me with my eyes. I'm telling her with all my body that I need her to go get Richard, and she just keeps on floating. 
I know what I have to do. I have to save my best friend. I say a little prayer. Mom and Dad both say that maybe God exists, but they're not sure. That's something they think I can explore for myself. They tell me it's okay to pray. I think maybe God is a big cockroach. Maybe Richard is God's son. Kind of like Jesus. Maybe Jesus was a cockroach. I think I'll tell my mommy that when she comes to pick me up. I muster up all the courage I have in me. The only way to do something scary is to do it so fast you don't even remember doing it. I pull my blue tinted goggles down over my eyes. I take one big breath. I get a running start and do a gigantic cannonball. That poor old grandma lady probably got her face all wet. At least she's wearing that flowery cap. Her hair won't be wet. I dive deep into the clean, kid-free pool, and there he is. Richard's legs are squirming. I'm so relieved he's still alive. I swim down as low as I can go and scoop him up. My lungs feel like they're about to burst. I have no idea how long I've been underwater. I move my arms and legs as quickly as I can. This propels me upward until I finally break the surface of the water. I use my best doggy paddle to get us safely to the edge of the pool. I set Richard down. I can tell he's grateful. I'm just glad he's okay. The old grandma lady didn't even seem to notice. Someone almost died at the pool today, and she didn't even notice. I feel those hot tears start to come up behind my eyes again. The lump in my throat is back, too. I try to gulp it down, but this time it doesn't go away. I want to say a million things. I want to tell Richard that I'm so glad he's my best friend. I want to tell him that he'll be my best friend for as long as I live and that I love him. I feel some of the wet from behind my eyes drip down my cheek. I wipe it off as fast as I can. Maybe because I'm in the pool nobody will notice because the rest of me's wet too. Richard, I say, I'm glad you're all right. I think Richard would make an excellent swim coach if he learned how to swim. He's very good at motivating people. Olivia Nelson is a second semester senior at Belmont University. She is an aspiring playwright who seeks to create opportunities for women on stage and on screen. This story was read from Noonan, Georgia. No matter what happens or how bad it seems today, Life does go on, and it will be better tomorrow. Maya Angelou Thank you for listening to Newcomers. If you'd like to learn more about us, please visit us at our Instagram page at newcomers underscore podcast. If you'd like to submit a story or become one of our readers, email us at newcomerspodcast at gmail.com.